is to the streets is to the mother effing screes it's your homeboy low from the go and i'm back with another episode of fast and furious interviews ladies and gentlemen on today's show we got a very special guest in the building y'all show some love for my homeboy the last real g last real g why don't you tell the people who you are and where you from yeah this is your boy last real g man um i was born and raised in forest city arkansas by the way of Little Rock, Arkansas. I reside in Jonesboro, Arkansas, but I do music. Uh, I do reality hip hop music uh, with uh, Run G, Mike Mill. Uh, I don't know if y'all know the producer Frank Castro, me and him connected with each other. He does music for OJ The Juice Man. He does produ production. His uh, name is Frank Castro. He's also from Forest City, Arkansas. And uh, I'm just, you know, I, I just represent Forest City, Arkansas. Uh, you know, I went to school in South Carolina, so I have connections out in South Carolina on the music. Uh, shout out to my brother, Dwayne Prello, uh, my homeboy, Donnie Brosco, uh, a.k.a. Donnie Simpson. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he's a producer and stuff uh, out in South Carolina that I went to school with, so... Me and him, you know, we trying to connect with each other and do some things. But, uh, yeah, this your boy Last Real G in the building. Salute to all my brothers and sisters in the struggle. And, you know, it is what it is. You hear me? Hey, man, well, check this out. I've been keeping my ears to the streets, and everybody been telling me to check out your music, bro. I checked out one of your songs, man. I thought it was hella dope, man. Why don't you tell us about your last project? Okay, what we have now on the table, uh, what I'm working on is uh, my debut album, which is, uh, I'm going to name it uh, Funerals and Court Dates, because whatever going on in our life, you know what I'm saying, we try to make it to those dates, but uh, uh, the last song that I did that I recorded here recently was uh, My City, and I called Four City Arkansas, but it's called My City, and it was an odd to Young Dolph. I actually took the uh, intro from uh, the, the intro, like a mid intro from uh, Key Glock's Proud that Young Dolph was speaking, talking about run his money up. And I utilized it in the song to show odd to uh, Young Dolph uh, because I got to meet him in person on May the 11th, 2013. And uh, one of my fellow artists, is, uh, which is uh, Ron G. He um, influenced me back in March of 2022 because I had took a seven year hyenas on the music and he influenced me to start back recording my music and everything. So right now what we have on the table is uh, I have 14 tracks finished that's ready to be heard. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the professional studio and re-record those tracks for sound quality purpose. So everyone will be able to hear my songs better because I've been sending my music to people and they've been telling me that my delivery is good, the sound is good. And that, but they say my music is a little bit too low and I've been using BandLab as a recording platform, but I do pay to go to the professional studio. And so that's what we have on the table right now. We have 14 full tracks and I want to do at least three more full tracks in the intro and the outro to this debut album. And the reason I've been getting everybody's review because I want to know the opinions of my fans, the listeners, so I'll know what to do as far as catering to them with my music. Um, I know that uh, people have everyday life situations that they're dealing with and things that's going on in their life. And I want everybody to know that even though you're going through something or I'm going through something, we still should be able to manage and maintain and do what we have to do in our everyday life, no matter what's going on around us, what's you know distracting us. We can't blame the opposite man for our situations or we can't blame anyone for our situations but i love doing music yeah i want to um continue to do my music to be able to help people and be able to utilize um the money that i make either working or off my music to be able to help my community and give back to the community whether it's i'm in jonesboro forest city arkansas wherever i'm at to be able to help the youth and let everybody know that hey this man is a positive influence and he's a family oriented person he, he cares about the women and the children and also my fellow brothers and sisters of the community you know i just want to be able to help wherever i'm at and wherever i go i want to be able to stand up and uh you know walk through and change the atmosphere wherever i'm at and be able to let people hear my music and tell my life story i want the world to hear my life story so that's the reason why i do music because i love music 
All right, so at this show right here, man, what we like to do is we like to dig just a little bit deeper into the background of the people that come on to the show. So how was it for you growing up, man? How was it for you as a young man, Z? Oh, um, to be honest with you, uh, growing up, you know, I didn't have uh, everything I wanted or everything that I needed, but my mom and my father raised me and did the, what they could to the best of their capabilities. Um, you know, over the years of uh, growing up, uh, I used to be around my great grandmother and my grandmother and other family members, and I'm family oriented. Uh, I grew up in a household with uh, three other siblings, uh, which is uh, me and uh, my three sisters. My oldest sister is uh, 41. My next to the oldest sister is uh, 39, and I'm I'm 38. And my younger sister. She is uh, 36. She's about to be 37. So I grew up around them, which I was the only male in the house. So I had it harder than them. Uh, I had that tough love growing up. My mama, she used to take care of us, all of us. But I used to have to, uh, you know, go around uh, other family members and stuff like that because my mom, she had to work. She was the only uh, household member that I had around versus my dad. He used to come around, but he wasn't around all the time. So I was raised up in a home without my father uh, being present 24 seven. But my mom, she was always there. And she taught me how to be a man and other men, as far as my uncle and cousins, they taught me how to be a man and how to operate as a man and taught me how to be respectful, call people, yes, sir, no, sir, things of that nature. Um, I think I was about Probably about, uh, I want to say, uh, going into kindergarten, that's when I started realizing that my father wasn't really around. And I used to question my mother, you know, why my dad ain't around? You know, what he got going on? What's so important that he's not in my life and he's not here with me every day, you know? And uh, my mom just, you know, got to telling me, you know, some things that happened in the past. Uh, my dad was really like an old player, you know what I'm saying? He'd be chasing his women, but he took care of his kids too. But my dad, he dealt with multiple women coming up. And in the summer times, I used to go be with my dad for those two to three months out of the summer. And uh, right before school would start, I'd go be with my mother through the school year. But uh, on a, in the summer vacation, spring breaks and stuff like that, I got to be around my my father's great, my father's grandmother, which is my great grandmama, and my his mother, which is uh my dad's mother, which is my grandmother. She she uh when I turned about thirteen, uh, I had moved from uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas, from elementary school, going into junior high school, my sixth grade year. I talked to my mom, and me and my mom ended up moving from Fort Smith, Arkansas, to Fort City, Arkansas, and that's when I got to be around my great grandmother and my grandmother on my mama's side of the family. And I got to be in the household with some of my cousins, um, you know, being around them, uh, Demikia McLean uh, and my other cousin, uh, Lauren McLean, some older guys that, you know, really put the finishing touches on me, showed me how to be a mature man, how to carry myself and how to deal with situations out in the streets. Uh, my mom, she used to discipline me when I got in trouble in school. The first time I got in trouble at school, I went to kindergarten uh, out in Pocola, Oklahoma, and I, I stole some chocolate milks and was drinking the chocolate milks in the, you know, just sneaking in and drinking them while we were sitting in the cafeteria before class. And that was the first time I ever got disciplined and got a whooping, you know, that I can remember uh, from being at school for stealing chocolate milks. And it taught me never to do that again. You know what I'm saying? So I'm that type of person, even in my youth, I learned not to, uh, you know, pick up things that wasn't mine. And, you know, not only that, if I do something wrong, I'm going to get disciplined or I'm going to get in trouble for it, which means I will get punishment. While you were searching for yourself and searching for your father at the same time, you managed to find another family on the streets, man. Could you tell us how that went? Oh, yeah. At the age of uh, 13... I was, uh, you know, uh, hanging around some of my childhood friends and some of my childhood homeboys that uh, I had just moved from, uh, need I remind you, I just moved from Fort Smith, Arkansas, 
back to Forest City, Arkansas, and a couple of the homies came to me and they was like, you know, do you want to be down with the guys? And they introduced me to the knowledge and the literature of uh, growth and development. And I took upon myself to get blessed into the organization. Uh, at that time, we didn't know anything about uh, 360 or, or whatever. I mean, uh, 720. So I came in, when I came into the organization, it was 360, but really in that year it was 720, but I didn't come into that knowledge of that later on, but I still was un under the same laws and principles and uh, the knowledge that I received over the years. Um, I got to be introduced to the Pontiac 19, which let us know about the old man and King David uh, being in unity with other organizations. So when I came up under my elders, they didn't teach me or raise me to go against other organizations, but they taught me anybody could be your opposition. Anybody could be your op. But uh, over the years, from the time I was 13 until you know my adulthood, over the junior high years and high school years, the knowledge of the organization taught me how to be a mature man. It taught me how to be a protector and a provider for my family. So at that time, within a year later from me being blessed into the organization, I started uh, detailing calls for uh, Nobles Car Wash in Forest City. And that's how I was able to provide for myself and my family and be around people. I got to meet people and be sociable with people. And on an everyday basis, I got to meet, you know, get to see my family members and get to see some of the homeboys after school. I would walk from Rice and Main Projects in Ford City to Nobles Car Wash, which was located on the same side of town. And I was able to, uh, you know, be around people that was in the streets, be around people who was educated, uneducated. And it taught me to be more humble, also hungry, but humble at the same time. And over the years, uh, you know, I, I started writing poetry, like I said, at the age of uh, 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 six years old, I was writing poetry and I converted it uh, when I was 10, 11 years old. I started uh, getting uh, Tupac and Biggie instrumentals from uh, different family members. They would, I, I don't know how they would do it, but they would get the instrumentals for me. And I used to get, a, I had a radio, uh, Emerson Walmart radio with a mic on there. And I would sit up there and record mixtapes uh, at the age of 10 and 11 years old to the time, you know, I was 12, 13 years old and realized what music was all about. It was about life situations. And I put my life situations and my problems and my issues and I bent it to uh, people through my music and told my stories through my music. But uh, the nation taught me how to be a man and turn that positive situations and negative energy into a positive and taught me how to carry myself and conduct myself in private and in public. Hey, can you tell the people where they can find your music at right now? Oh uh, yeah, you can um you can actually go on SoundCloud and uh check me out. I'm on SoundCloud, Eugene Controversy King Smith. That's another one of my aliases, but uh you go on YouTube and you put in Eugene Smith or you can put in uh, L A Last Real G, which is L A S R E A L G, on YouTube. You also can go on Reverb Nation and look up Eugene Smith or Last Real G, or you can come on Facebook and hit me up, and I'll send you the links. Which my name is Eugene Solo Dolo Smith on Facebook, and you can get you know the uh, you can get audio from me, or you can get the uh, YouTube link. And once you get the YouTube link, it'll take you to my channel and you'll be able to hear my music. And I also have another um, YouTube channel, which is Franchise 870. So if you really want to hear my old music versus what I used to do to what I'm doing now, you can go on there. It's Franchise, like the franchise, like a store, 870 on YouTube. Just put that in and it'll take you to my old music and you'll get to hear from then, which was back in 2010, when I actually did my first uh, mixtape, which is called Money Way.